Hello and welcome to the Sixth Form Open Evening at St Bede's Catholic College. Our Sixth Form is called Arete. My name is Lucy Kirkbright and I'm the Director of Sixth Form and Assistant Principal at St Bede's Catholic College. I wanted to start by showing you some of the things that other people have said about us. So I have some quotes for you from Ofsted, from the diocese, when they have inspected us, about what they feel we're doing for our students and helping them to reach their potential. Now Arete, the name of our sixth form, um, has the meaning of to be the best that you can be and that's what we're always striving to do, enable students to be the best that they can be, giving them the best educational provision that will allow them to move on to the destination of their choice. Results are obviously really important and we're really proud of our Arete results. Um, last year we had a value added score of plus 0.46 which is nearly half a grade higher than a student would be expected to score based on their GCSE results and that's something we're really proud of. Um, that resulted in an average grade of B, so of all of the, the exams that students took, of all of the grades that they got, the average was a B grade, um, many were higher than this as well. Destinations are also of course very important, so it's about where these grades will get you um, in the next step of your education, in the next step towards your, your career. And it's not just about grades, it's actually about how the sixth form and everybody here helps students to make the right choices in moving on. So our students tend to want to go to university, so about 84%, and that's a fairly stable figure, year on year, will choose to go to university. Not all students, so there's still 16% who don't, and they choose to go into different things, such as um, apprenticeships, some people into the forces, and some people into employment. Um, but most students generally coming here are looking at university as an option. Um, the Russell Group, you may or may not be aware, is a group of universities, a select group of universities who would be the top research universities in the country. Um, types of universities where um, if you go to one of these you are, and get a good degree, then generally you um, are viewed very well by employers when they look at your degree from a Russell Group University. Um, and the figure that we have for Russell Group is generally very, very high each year. So for a lot of different reasons. Um, we have a small sixth form, we can give really good focused attention for students. Um, our average grade is, is good, it's high and our value added is high and therefore our students are getting the grades that they need to go to these prestigious universities. Um, and we also have a lot of support programmes, so we liaise with Russell Group universities in the local area to ensure that students have support from them and that sometimes results in lowered offers for students to be able to go to those universities and that's really, really helped a lot of our students in the past um, and will do this year too. So the percentage of students that goes to the Russell Group universities is actually 48% and that's a figure that we're really, really proud of. Another figure that um, I think is notable is first generation students. So um, actually 52% of our students last year were the first in their generation to go to university. So they, um, that means that their family members haven't gone to university before um, and that's a really brilliant accolade for people who want to go to university that we've managed to get them there and that they've managed to get there from their hard work as well. Um, and then first choice, this figure is, is also fairly stable, it changes slightly year on year, um, but generally a lot of our students get to go to their first choice university because they're getting good grades, they're meeting what the universities are wanting and so that's an 83% figure for last year, lots of students went and the year before it was, it was the same figure, actually exactly the same. So I thought I'd also just um, feature you about some of the student highlights. So um, some of the results that we had last year, I, I can't name them, but it's really nice to share their grade with you. So the first student um, I got A star, A star, A star. So three of those A stars. And that was even with the algorithm that you might have heard about um, in the summer when grades were, were looked at by an algorithm and downgraded in many cases, this student wasn't. So it was very clear that she was always going to achieve these grades with very much hard work um, and she did a brilliant job. Uh, she's gone to do an art foundation course at Bristol University and she will be looking at applying to Oxford or Cambridge um, next year. Second student, um, A star, A star, A, uh, they've gone to study law and history at Manchester University. Um, so she was another student who came to us, she was first in her, her family to go to university and we we're really proud of her achievements. Student C, um, four A-levels for this student, so an A-star and three A's, studying mathematics at Birmingham University, and I've heard that he's gone and he's very happy there. And student D, two A-stars and an A, chemical engineering at Nottingham University. Uh, student E, two A-stars and a B, uh, and this student was on a Bristol Scholars offer, and that's something I'll talk about a little bit about later, a support programme, um, and she has gone on to study child studies at Bristol University, and she was desperate to go to Bristol University, and she got there. 
And then student F, we have three A stars again at Linguistics at Lancaster University. And this student actually had an unconditional offer from, from very, very long ago. Um, straight away, the university's recognised how wonderful she was um, and she, she ended up going based on the top grades. So they knew exactly what they were doing when they were giving her that unconditional offer. Student G, two A stars and an A, uh, studying mathematics at New College in Oxford. Um, and yeah, he's, he's gone off to, to there now, so very exciting. And student H, um, studying law at New College Oxford as well. So we actually had two go to the very same college at Oxford um, this year. Uh, and they, they are sort of loosely friends, but it's very nicely for, nice for them to go together um, and explore this new area and this new really exciting life. Okay. So some of the reasons why I think that post-16 education at Arete is a really good thing to do. Okay, I think that it's a great place for you to decide to come to and, and I hope that, that you will want to do so. We are a specialist level three provider and what that means is that we only offer level three courses. So those are courses where um, students have got GCSEs, grades of um, at least five fives, including English and maths, and then grade sixes in the subjects that, that they are going to study at A level. So that's the kind of level that you'd be looking at here. And the reason for that is that we offer A levels. So that is very much our, our provision. We decided to be specialist in that area because we wanted to do one thing really, really well, um, instead of doing lots of different things and not doing them maybe quite as well as you could when you're focused focusing on one thing. Um, a major feature of, of our sixth form success, I really believe, is our small class sizes. So unfortunately, you're not able to tour a rete at the moment because this is a virtual open evening. Um, but if you were to come to our classrooms, you would find that actually there are no more than 24 seats in our classroom. They are seminar rooms. Um, and that's because we want it to be a small sixth form. So we wanted to build it in that way to make sure it had that really personal feel to it. Um, our class sizes range. They can sometimes go up to, to 20. That's fairly rare. Um, they, they generally would be perhaps between about 7 and 15. We have a range of different class sizes, but, but they would definitely be small in comparison to other providers who are offering larger um, provision. Um, I mentioned earlier that one of the things I think is a, is a great thing for students to help them get to a Russell Group University is we have um, lots of schemes, lots of support schemes with the local universities, those Russell Group universities. So we've got an Access to Bristol scheme, or a lot of our students get on this scheme and they go to, um, to Bristol on a Wednesday afternoon to have some support, to um, look at the facilities, to do lectures, and they actually get a lowered offer at the end of this course to help them um, get into Bristol, and we've had lots of success in that area. Uh, same is Pathways to Law, that's another Bristol um, initiative, and Pathways to Medicine. So each year we have a good number of students going to here. Now proportionately schools get um, a set amount of places um, to, for these uh, these programmes and because we're a small sixth form proportionately you've got a much like a higher chance of getting onto those programmes because there's not as many students in the year group so we get quite a few places there. Bristol Scholars is a fantastic scheme and that's for students where um, perhaps there's been some form of educational disruption to their life and um, that could be a whole manner of things but if there's been some form of disruption then we can actually nominate students for this particular offer and that's where Bristol supports students to move forward to head to university with them um, and they lower the offers quite significantly so even lower than the access to Bristol offer to support those students where their education has been disrupted and that's perhaps the reason why they aren't achieving just A stars um, but they're still really clever students who've got great potential and they recognise that. We have a really great relationship with um, Bristol Scholars, with the team there and as a result year on year we have three times as many places as we are allocated because they say that they feel our students are really worthy and they work really well with them. Another one we have is uh, recently we've joined On Track to Bath, another support scheme similar to Access to Bristol, um, where students can go out and they can have some experience with Bath, attend lectures. So that's the kind of university base. Other than that though, we also have many other things. So it's not just about going to university if you come to this sixth form. Lots of students choose to, but there are other opportunities too. So we have enrichment opportunities, ones that run alongside our A-level provision. We have the Duke of Edinburgh Award. Um, we have, at the moment we don't because of the, the COVID situation, but usually we have lots and lots of trips that are running. So for example, um, we have a trip to Iceland for our geography students. We have science trips as well. We have um, so, uh, ski trips. We have interesting things that are going on all the time to help students kind of in their subjects, but also holistically to grow and to have these wonderful experiences that everybody should, should have. 
Um, we also run a work experience week and we have um, a support team here to help students get really good focused work experience that will enable them to make good applications for moving on to their next level of education. And I'd say that the facilities here as well are excellent. The reason for that is because we are pretty new. So our first building was built in 2012 and our second building has only just been completed. So a year ago it was completed. Um, and we have these two brand new, pretty much um, sixth form buildings with fantastic facilities. If you're um, into to science particularly, then you'll find that our science labs are absolutely state of the art. They're wonderful laboratories um, and they have proved really, really popular with students. So yes, I would really encourage you if you're a science student to come and have a look at these. When, when things open up again. And another thing we have is strong pastoral and guidance systems in place. So we have a specialist team of sixth form tutors. Um, they've been tutors for many years now. And it, it kind of just culminates in a really supportive environment because we've got small class sizes, because our, our tutors don't have to have a tutor group of kind of 30 plus. They are generally our, our highest level tutor group would be 20. Um, and so they have really focused attention. We have a mentoring program in place to make sure that all our students, their physical, their mental health, as well as their education is supported to make sure that they can achieve and be happy in doing so and that's something that we're really passionate about. These are our subjects that we have on offer. As I said, um, we are mainly focused on A-levels. We are all um, level three provision. So these are the A-levels that we offer. Um, in addition to that, it's not just A-levels. We have uh, math studies is what we call it. You might know the qualification as core maths, um, which is worth half an A-level. And another qualification we do as well um, is the EPQ, the extended project qualification. Uh, and that again is worth half an A-level. It's where students do kind of a mini dissertation um, and they get university points from it. It's fantastic for helping develop their independent learning skills and we've got really great success in that area. Um, there's one in brackets here and that's product design. We haven't um, run that one yet but that's a new A level because we've had some interest in that one and so we're hoping to run that one this year so if you're keen to do that then please do, do apply and we hope to get that one on offer for you. Okay. So now on to kind of some practical things. How do you choose a course? Now the greatest thing to think about is it has to interest you. So with A-levels, what you need to do is you need to choose generally three A-levels. A very small group of students would choose perhaps four A-levels, but most students would end up doing three. It must interest you. It's also got to link really to your future career plans if you know what you want to do. So if you can think about it, try to think about what maybe do you want to be doing in three years time or in 10 years time and think loosely about kind of the area that you want to be in. Do you want to be in a science career? Do you want to be an arts career? Do you want to be a journalist? Do you want to be a doctor? What do you want to do? Some careers don't require specific A-level subjects. Some of them do. Some university courses don't require specific A-level subjects, but some of them do. And so what you need to do is make sure that you're choosing A-levels that allow you to meet the university requir entry requirements and the requirements of the career. But crucially, that has to also be A-levels that you are going to be good at and that you are going to achieve in. So there's no good choosing um, A-level maths, for example, if you think you want to go into a career that might involve maths, if really maths isn't your strong subject. So it's really important to get that balance right. And we help you with that as well. Um, so you can think ahead. Some of the Russell Group universities that I've mentioned, I talk about these quite a lot because they are the questions that I get most when people talk to me about this. Um, they have some, some of them published lists of subjects that they would prefer students to take, but most of them it's just to do with the careers and to do with a particular course. There is um, a good website that you can look at, the Russell Group website, and it's got a, a booklet called the Informed Choices booklet, which might you might find helps you um, to make some of your choices. So I'd encourage you to have a look at that. You can also go onto a website called the UCAS website, and that's just listed down here, where you can look at a, each university department's course requirements um, on their website. So you can see what a particular career, what engineering needs, what medicine needs, and that will help you with your decision-making process. We will also help you too. So I think today what was important, or kind of this, this next few weeks when you're making your decisions, is first of all to know your predicted grades. Ask your teachers, and that's whether you're at St Bede's or whether you're at another school. Consider what you enjoy, as well as your career plans. There are subject videos that are, that are on our website, and I would encourage you to watch those subject videos. You don't have to watch every single one. If you know that you're not going to study a particular subject, it's not a subject you enjoy, then of course don't watch that one. But if you're a little bit unsure, I'd say watch quite a few of these videos. And our staff, they've made these to help you to make your decisions. 
and then speak to subject teachers. So if you're at St Bede's, speak to the teachers that you have here. If you're at a different school, then your teachers there will also be able to help you. Even if they don't teach A-levels in those subjects, they still will be able to help you to know about those subjects because they would have taken A-levels in them. Okay. With students at St Bede's, we are going to run some in-person subject assemblies. They will start after half term um, and your tutors will let you know about them. So we're able to, to do some of those in your year 11 bubble area. So on to a, a quite crucial part as well about how to make an application. There are two ways to do this. Um, if you go to our college website, then there is an application form here that you can print. Um, every year 11 student in St Bede's has been given that, so all the tutors have that, so you can collect those application forms from them. And we have also delivered uh, application forms to schools in the local area, schools where we normally have students come um, to, to us in sixth form after being there until year 11. So you can ask your careers advisor and they will have those application forms. Perhaps the more easy thing to do though would be um, to do our online application form. So we'd encourage you probably to use this one where you can just go online and you can submit your application just on our website there. So in that situation you only need to do one or the other of those two things. So what happens next? As I said, subject assemblies are planned in term two for St Bede students. Your tutors will let you know about those. So you can come, you can watch these assemblies. The staff who deliver the A-levels here will be telling you about their subjects and what you need to study them and where they will take you. And you'll be able to ask some questions. Um, we usually have cause consultation meetings and that is where we meet every single one of you and I used to absolutely love doing these where we'd meet you and we'd speak to you about your subject choices, about what you want to do in the future, we'd get to know you a little bit and allow you to ask any questions you have. With the current COVID situation we're not able to run those cause consultation meetings at the moment, however I hope that we will be able to do these in the, the after Christmas, so in, in term three or four, if we can, then we will do that. But at the moment, what we will do is we will offer provisional places by letter. So once we get your application form, we will have a look at it um, and we will give you a provisional place that basically says, we'd be very happy to have you come here. It's just subject you, to you achieving the grades that you need and the subjects that you wish to take. Okay, so those letters, look out for those days when months will be coming out. What I'd now encourage you to do is at this point in our normal open evening, we'd usually have a load of students stand up in front of you and talk about what they think about Arete. And that's usually a really popular thing to watch because it is coming directly from their mouths. We don't script them. I ask them questions. They've decided on the questions that they'd like to be asked. Um, and then they give you their, their honest view. So we've got John this year, Isabel, Albareca, Yusuf and Kalina, and they'd be very happy to give you their view of what it's like to study at St Bede's. You can click on, on that next. Okay, thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions at all, then please get in touch via our website. So you've got contact at stbcc.org is the email address um, and we will uh, get back to you straight away. Okay, thank you. So John, you were at St Bede's in year 7 to 11 and when I first met you in year 10, you were keen to move to a different college for year 12. Can you tell us why you changed your mind? Um, after looking around all the different um, colleges in Bristol, um, I really found that actually St Bede's really had everything I was looking for. Um, I already had lots of friends here, um, I knew how good the teaching staff were, um, and also the class sizes are really small, um, which means that you get lots of one-to-one -one tuition. Great, thank you John. And so can you tell us, um, what's it been like studying here, did you make the right decision? Yeah, I think it's really great studying here. Um, there are lots of contact hours and you can always go and see teachers um, or email them if you need to. Um, so I think I definitely made the right decision um, by staying at Rattic. Great. So John, could you tell us a little bit about the virtual lessons that we've been running to mitigate the impact of the coronavirus and the support that you've received? Yeah, the support has been really great. So we had to isolate for two weeks and that meant that we had to have online lessons. Um, I had all of my online lessons as if I was in school um, and my tutor even arranged quizzes and things like that just to really kind of remind us what um, it was like to be in. So yeah, it's been really great um, and we haven't lost any of our time by having to be at home. And finally, John, you're part of our Arete group and you're applying to Oxford to study history. Could you tell us a little bit about the support you've received in making your Oxford application? Yeah, the support's been um, really fantastic. So um, throughout the process of um, UCAS and writing my personal statement, my tutors have been really helpful, um, as well as the subject lead um, and Mr Goodman and Miss Lindsay, who um, lead the kind of Oxbridge group. 
um, and that's been really great because you get to have loads of different opinions um, and then you can kind of decide which bits of information you think um, are most key and then everything gets looked over at least once so you really feel reassured that um, you've made a competitive application and you should be successful. Thank you very much John. So Isabel, um, could you tell us about the support you've encountered at St Beats? So all the teachers are really great, whether that's SLT, subject leaders or tutors, they're always there to help and support, which is definitely helpful because um, university applications can be really daunting. There's also in-college um, counselling, which is great because A-levels can get really stressful. Okay, thank you. Um, and your part is about our early entry group of students applying to study medicine. Could you tell us a little bit about the support you've received in making your application? Yeah, so all the teachers have been great in keeping us updated on any extracurricular talks or courses that we can be a part of, which is really helpful because if you don't have any kind of contact outside of school, uh, it can be really daunting if you don't know kind of where to go for stuff. Uh, teachers have been great helping to make sure that we all have the perfect application. And yeah, it's, they, everyone's been really supportive. Fantastic. Um, and part of your studies with us, you've chosen to undertake the extended project qualification. Can you tell us a little bit about this EPQ qualification? So all of my subjects are quite sciencey, so I've really enjoyed kind of having an opportunity to write about something that really interests me. Um, it's also such a great qualification to have because some universities lower your offer based on a high grade in your EPQ. Great. Um, and you, Isabella, as somebody who's embraced all of the extracurricular opportunities on offer at St Bees throughout your time here. Could you tell us a little bit about extracurricular life within Arete? So um, we have kind of allocated time for extracurricular on a Wednesday where there's so many different things you can do, um, including sports, D of E, um, stuff like wellbeing, and then year 13 you can do EPQ. Um, and it's really great just to have a time to kind of get away from the studies and just kind of relax. And also there's stuff that you can join in with the whole school, like choir and shows as well. Fantastic, thank you Isabel. Al Baraka, you were at Oasis Brightstone for your 11 to 16 education. What made you choose St Bees for your post-16 studies and was there anything that put you off beforehand? Well, one of the main reasons I chose St Bees was the smaller class sizes. Um, there are about 8 to 15 people in each class, which is very useful because it means the teacher has more time to help us individually and help us improve and it means they are able to assign personalised tasks to help us get the best grades possible um, and honestly as someone who wanted to take three science A levels um, it was really important that the school had good science facilities. Um, most schools have really basic science labs so when I came here and um, I saw that St Bede's allowed the science A level students the use of their fume cupboards as well as their science labs. I was really happy and excited and like it was, I felt like it was the place for me. Brilliant, thank you. And what has it been like coming from a different school? How has it been settling in? Um, it definitely took some time getting used to the way the lessons are run as well as the layout of the school. But with the support of everyone in the school and of all the teachers and all the students as well, I felt like I really settled in really quickly. Um, the teachers are really understanding and more than happy to help with everything that I needed. Um, and, you know, obviously coming from a different school meant I had to adapt to all these different things. But throughout my time here, I never felt as if I'd come from a different school. It felt like I was embraced quite quickly and I felt like I'm part of this huge family. Great, I'm really glad about that. Um, so what would you say to any student here today from a different school who might be worried about joining a new college? The most important thing is not to worry about making friends because as everyone in this school is at the same place as you, they're all in the same boat. When I first joined those are about 10 people from a different school who, work, who didn't go to St Bede's but as soon as we came in we were all welcomed and we all made friends much quicker than we all thought we would. So it's definitely important to remember that making friends isn't a priority right now. It's coming in and experiencing sixth form. And you'll soon see that making friends comes along the way and then you'll, you know, you'll embrace it. Fantastic. Thank you, Abraka. So Kalina, you've always wanted to stay at St. Beads. Can you tell us why? 
So I was quite keen to say it sleep needs due to its like supportive and positive atmosphere. Um, I found the jump from GCSE to A-level quite intimidating um, and as a year 7 to 11 pupil I knew that the staff here at St. Peter's were very, very supportive um, and as a year 13 student now I can confirm that they were extremely supportive and gave me all the help I needed to settle in. Fantastic, thank you. And can you tell us about um, specifically choosing courses and the support you received there to help you make your decisions on which A-levels to take? So the wonderful support continued all the way through my kind of jump to A-level. Um, I was provided with numerous course consultation meetings where I could discuss my choices and decide whether they were right for me. This support continued when I attended the Taster Day, I was given sessions to try out subjects and then there was also a period when you first start your A-levels where you can try out different subjects, swap around a lot um, to make sure you've definitely made the right decision. Fantastic, thank you very much Kalina and thank you to everybody for sharing your experiences.